G'day, I'm James, and here's a curious question. I've drawn here a square array of lattice points. Uh, they're all on the corners of a square, let's say one distance apart, vertically and horizontally, grand. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to draw circles on this plane that avoid going through lattice points, but I want my circles to actually contain on the interior sum. For example, I could draw a circle that contains zero lattice points. A little tiny circle like that would do the trick. No lattice points on its inside. I can also draw a circle that contains exactly one lattice point. Namely something like that would do the trick. But then I want to keep going. Could I draw a circle that misses all the lattice points itself, but contains exactly two lattice points on its inside? And you think for a while that maybe I could set things up so a circle like that would actually do the trick. My picture's a bit wonky, but maybe that's believable I could actually do that. And you could check on that one. Could I draw a circle like that that really does it? Three lattice points on the inside. So remember, I want my circles to miss going through lattice points themselves, but I want now three lattice points on the inside. Do you think that's doable? And you stare at a while and you think, well, maybe it's possible to get a circle like this. Oh, it looks like I just hit that one, but maybe miss it. Maybe there's one that could be arranged just like that that just misses it. Is that possible? Ooh, ooh, my pictures are not very good. Hard to tell. Okay, but I'll keep going. Four lattice points on the inside? Well, that feels believable. Maybe I could do something like that. Uh, five, a circle that misses lattice points itself but has five on its inside? Maybe that's doable if I think of something like this. Maybe a circle like that will do the trick? Six? Seven? Whoa. All right, so some of these pictures here are a bit questionable already. My question is, can it be done? If I give you some count of lattice points, I want 73. Is it possible, for sure, to draw a circle in the plane that itself misses going through lattice points? I don't want to go through a lattice point, but I want 73 lattice points to be on its inside. Whatever counting number I give you, is there sure to exist a circle with that many lattice points on its inside and none on the boundary? That's a tough question. Actually, let's make the question worse. Could I do that and have all my circles be concentric? That is, I want to find a special place in the plane, maybe something like this, with the property that if I draw a little circle around it, sure, I get that with no lattice points on its inside. Make the circle a bit bigger, I get one lattice point on its inside. Make the circle a bit better, bigger still. Ooh, my picture's gonna be really bad here, but <laughs> two lattice points on its inside. Make the circle a bit bigger still all centered about that same one point, three less points, four less points, and so on. Could there be a very special point in the plane with the property that I could grow circles from that special point, all concentric circles, that hit one, two, three, four, five lattice points at a time? Because if I hit one to up to five, it go a little bit bigger, then it will contain five. Hit number six, go a little bit bigger, then it'll contain six lattice points. Go to number seven, hit it, go a little bit slightly bigger, then it'll contain seven lattice points. Is there a special point in the plane with that magic property? Because that would be awesome and also answers my previous question. The answer to the previous question is yes. There are such magic points in the plane. For example, this point here, with x coordinate root five, y coordinate 1.1, has the astounding property that all the distances, the different lattice points in the plane, no matter where you go, how far out, they're all going to be different numbers. There won't be two lattice points at the same distance from this one. That means then I'll never, as I expand circles, hit two points at the same time. I'll only ever hit one point at a time just as I needed for the previous question. And I claim that is one such special point. Whoa, so I wanna prove that, I wanna prove, I wanna prove that this point here, all the distances to different lattice points are indeed different. You'll never be in a situation like this, where say this point here with coordinates a comma b, both integers, and maybe this point over here with c, uh, coordinates c comma d, both integers, has that distance there equaling that distance there. How could we prove that never happens? All right, well, we do as follows. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna use, use basically, I guess, the distance formula, because I wanna talk about this distance here and that distance here. Let me compare distances with the standard school geometry distance formula. 
What is the distance formula? Well, here's the lovely thing about using coordinate systems that are at 90 degrees, that actually I can see a little right triangle here. So if I want this distance, the hypotenuse is a right triangle. So Pythagoras says, oh, the distance squared is just the difference of the x value squared plus the difference of the y value squared. The distance here, squared, will be the difference of the x value squared plus the difference of the y value squared. I want the same distances. I want the same distances squared. Therefore, I want the difference of the x value squared plus the difference of the y value squared to equal the difference of the x value squared divides the y value squared over yonder. Okay, let's translate into algebra. What's going on? So I want uh, this difference of x plus this difference of y, each squared. Uh, what's it going to be? It's going to be uh, a minus root 5 squared uh, plus the difference of the y values, uh, b minus 1.1 squared. If this picture were happening, would have to equal c minus root 5 all squared plus d minus 1.1 all squared. All right, now remember, a, B, C, D, A, B, C, D are whole numbers. Uh, 1.1 is a very nice rational number, it's a fraction, it's 11 tenths. And I've got this root 5, which we know is not a fraction. So I have a feeling the irrationality of root 5 is going to be a key play in this game here. All right, if I'm going to focus on root 5, let me bring all this root 5 stuff over to one side. Let me subtract uh, C minus root 5 squared from both sides and bring this over to the other side. So this is really A minus root 5 squared minus C minus root 5 squared equals uh, d minus 1.1 squared minus b minus 1.1 squared. In fact, let me try to pull out that root 5 uh, from this indeed. So let me expand the brackets here. I'll leave this right-hand side stuff, side stuff the same. Don't do any extra work unless you have to. Uh, a squared plus 5, a squared plus 5 minus 2a root 5 uh, minus c squared minus 5 uh, plus 2c root 5 equals this stuff. Okay, how's that for a bad board technique? Uh, plus 5 minus 5, okay, that's a little bit simpler. Ooh, um, okay, so now we've got an a squared and a c squared here, minus c squared. Let me bring that over here and just keep, really keep all the root 5 stuff on the left-hand side. So, messy technique. Oh, no, I'll do it here. Uh, what's it going to be? Uh, 2c minus a root 5 would equal d minus 1.1 squared minus b minus 1.1 squared. Bring the a squared over and bring the negative c squared over. <laughs> so right now... If this is happening, then that's the algebra that's happening. All right, all right, so we got that equation is that. Now, this is trouble, troublesome. This is potentially troublesome because, because this is integer, 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 1.1 squared, 1.1 squared. Everything here is a rational number. It's a nice rational number. It's like one, it's a finite decimal. Over here, I've got uh, two times an integer. Root 5 times an integer equals a rational number. So I could then argue that root 5 would be all this stuff, which I'm not going to bother writing again, divided by 2 times c minus a, which will then tell me that root 5 is actually a rational number. Not true. Not true. He said there's one way out of this pickle. It may be that this is 0, in which case I can't divide on both sides. So for this equation to be true, knowing that root 5 is irrational, I am forced to conclude that this number here is 0. C minus A is 0. That is, I'm forced to conclude that A and C must be the same number. All right, all right, great. A and C must be the same number. So the algebra tells me that A and C are the same value. So actually, my picture is off. It doesn't matter because I can play with this equation now. A minus root 5 squared here. A minus root 5 squared here. They're the same value. So my equation really now boils down to B minus 1.1 squared equals D minus 1.1 squared. All right, okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going, this is fun. Uh, so if those two distances are equal, I must have that A equals C and this next relationship holds. Something squared equals something squared, so that I could be the same thing. B minus 1.1 equals D minus 1.1, or one's the negative of the other. B minus 1.1 equals uh, negative D minus 1.1, so it's 1.1 minus D. All right, what are the consequences of that? Uh, oh, this tells us that B equals D. B equals D. Oh, so A equals C and B equals D. Oh, maybe they're the same point to begin with. Well, that's not happening. That's not happening. I definitely want to consider separate points. In which case, this must be the case, uh, which tells me that B plus D is 2.2. Uh, uh, ooh, ooh, can that happen? Huh, so now we're boiled down. If these two distances are the same, I must have the x coordinates being the same and b plus d adding up to 2.2. But b and d are whole numbers and two whole numbers do not add up to 2.2. Which means that's not happening, that's not happening, which means the original equation is not happening, which means this picture is not happening. You cannot get two lattice points the same distance from that special point p right there. 
which does it, which absolutely does it. I think that is amazing that we can actually pinpoint one, literally there's one, all of whose distances from different lattice points are different values. That's amazing, in which case just expand circles, hit them one at a time, boop, 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 boop. go a little nudge a little bit bigger, and you'll get circles that contain zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way through all the counting numbers on their interiors. That's amazing, I love it. If you've done some undergraduate mathematics or graduate school mathematics and measure theory, we can actually prove that almost all points in the plane have this magic property of having distinct distances to all the lattice points in the plane. Whoa! Here goes, here's why, here's why. First of all, there's definitely a countable number of points, lattice points in the plane. Okay, countable number of points. In fact, there's a countable number of pairs of points. If I just choose a pair of points, there's countably many pairs I can choose. Great. For each pair of points, there's a line of equidistance. These are all the points that are equidistance from uh, those two lattice points. So for example, this is not a good point for us that we were talking about earlier because that would be equidistance from that. That's a bad point. So these are all bad points for those two lattice points. Well, there are, there are countably many pairs of lattice points, so there are countably many lines of equidistance through this plane. Countably many lines of equidistance through pairs of lattice points. Well, if a number of them, but countably many. Each line in the plane has measure zero. A countable number of sets of measure zero has measure zero. The entire plane does not have measure zero. So that's infinite measure. Which means then these lines cover a set of measure zero in the entire plane. Which means then that almost all points are not on one of these bad lines. Therefore, almost every point in this plane has the property that its distance from lattice points are all distinct values. Wow, wow, wow. And what I loved about what we did previously, I can actually even name one. Root 5, 1.1 is such a point. Fabulous.